Today we're talking about the master fader track within Pro Tools. And if you guys didn't know, there's actually a difference between the master fader track compared to all the other tracks within Pro Tools. And if you want to know what that difference is, stick around after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing, and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash that like button. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So without further ado, today we're talking about the Pro Tools Master Fader. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to create a Master Fader track. I'm gonna teach you how the Master Fader is different than all other tracks. And then I'm gonna teach you some best use case scenarios regarding the Master Fader and Signal Flow. So before we get to all that, in the top right corner now, I have a link popping up to my Pro Tools training playlist. So definitely check out that playlist after this video because it's full of great videos that will help you get better at using this amazing DAW. And also, if you're new to Pro Tools or looking to upgrade to a different version of Pro Tools, or you don't even have Pro Tools yet, I have links in the description below that can help you with all of that. So with that being said, let's get further into this topic and let's look at the Master Fader in Pro Tools. All right, there are several ways to create a track in Pro Tools. We can go up to a track menu here and we can click that and we can go down to new and that will launch the new tracks window. However, on this channel, we like to use keyboard shortcuts. So on your keyboard, if you do control shift N, or on a Mac, it would be Command Shift N, that will launch the new tracks window also. And when you're creating your master fader track, it needs to be stereo, so we wanna change this to stereo. And then obviously we're not creating an audio track here, so we wanna change this to the master fader, okay? So everything else here can stay the same. Now, I'm not gonna create this because I already have a master track in the session, but when you're ready to go, all you would do is hit the create button here and you're good to go. So you need a master fader track in all of your sessions and it's not in there by default, okay? So if you're new to Pro Tools, you may not have thought you needed to create one, but now you know, definitely create one for all of your sessions. All right, so now that you've created your master fader track, you need to know how it is different from all the other tracks. And it has one main difference. The inserts on the master fader track are actually post fader, okay? So what do I mean by that? Well, that means that the audio actually hits the fader first and then goes to the insert chain up here. So I have a drum track soloed up here and I'm gonna show you an example here, okay? So I have it going through a pre-master track first here, which is just a aux track and then we can actually hear the difference, or I should say see the difference uh, between the two tracks here, because this again is going to be pre-fader here, and this is gonna be post-fader, all right? So I want you to see what happens with the plugins up here, and we're actually using the VMR, and we're using the trimmer plugin here. So we're gonna actually look at the VU meter, all right? So let me put these both up here. So it's kind of a little hard to fit all these. All right, so this one here on the left is the pre-master, and this one on the right is the actual master, okay? So the master here is post-fader, okay? So I'm gonna start playing the drums here, and then I want you to watch the view meters and see as I adjust these faders here, how these change or don't change, and then we'll talk about them after. All right, so let's give it a listen. All right, so as you can see, when I pulled down the pre-master fader here, the view meter over here did not change in level at all. 
and that's because regarding the inserts, this track is pre-fader because it's an aux track. And aux tracks and all other tracks in Pro Tools except for the master fader are pre-fader regarding inserts. Now, when I brought down the master fader track here, you saw that the view meter here, all the audio disappeared. And again, that's because the inserts are post fader. Now, the reason for this is because we usually want the audio to be hitting some sort of plugin on the way out of our DAW, whether that be some sort of limiter or dither or whatever, okay? And that's just how Pro Tools is designed. That's how other DAWs are designed. That's just how it works, okay? So lastly, what I wanna teach you is some basic signal flow regarding the master fader and how I like to use it. And how I use it is actually how I have it set up in the session here, okay? So I don't particularly like to just send everything to the master fader. I like to have a pre-master before the master fader, and I just use a aux track for that. And I do all of my mix bus processing on this pre-master fader here. And I also do a lot of my mastering on it, except for any mastering that involves limiting, okay? So on my master here, I have a couple different limiting chains here. So I have some clipping, I have my Sonics Oxford inflator, and then I have my Ozone, which does my final limiting there, okay? But all of my actual things that deal with resonant frequencies, my stereo widening, that all happens here on the pre-master, which I consider part of the mastering chain and not the mixing chain, okay? So another great reason to have these two tracks here is for volume automation on the overall mix. So you could do it on the master fader here, and that would be perfectly fine as it would go right into the plugin chain. However, I don't particularly like to lose control of the master fader. And as you know, when you add volume automation, you lose control of the fader. Now, I don't really care if I lose control of the pre-master fader. So that is where I apply the volume automation. And since this fader is post inserts, doing the automation here won't affect the feed into these plugins, which is perfect. So typically what I might do is I might add maybe 0.5 or a dB boost. It choruses in the songs that need it. And I'll do it right here on the pre-master and then it feeds right into the master track and then we're all good to go. And that's pretty much how I do my overall volume automation when it comes to mastering. And pretty much, yeah, that is my overall workflow kind of thought process and theory on why I use these two separate tracks. All right, so that is everything you need to know about the Pro Tools Master Fader. You now know how to create one. You know how it is different from all the other tracks and you have some use case scenarios and how to use it within your signal flow. So if you guys end up liking this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe so I'm making this content for you and hit that notification bell to know when new videos coming out. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys check out my video on all the different track types that exist within Pro Tools. And with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.